also coming up, let's clear your mind. Or free your mind, yes. Well, yeah. <laughs> the author Stephen J. Vogel sits down with Susanna to talk about how your mind is what your brain does for a living. That's next. Good morning, welcome back. This morning we're talking about what you need to know to create a happier life. Joining me this morning is author Stephen J. Fogel. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. Congratulations on this book. It was just released this month. Your mind is what your brain does for a living. Yes, thank I you. I understand it's a sequel to your first book. Yes, which is my mind is not always my friend. It isn't? No, it's not. Your mind's playing tricks on you, is that true then? Well. Um, yes, the mind, consider that the mind is like a GPS system or uh, a computer. And in the old days of computers, we used to say garbage in, garbage out. So if you right. type the wrong thing in, you're going to get the wrong thing in, the wrong thing out. So with your global positioning system, if you put the wrong address in or if the, or if the satellite has it wrong, right. you're going to end up somewhere you're not supposed to be. So we all have a voice in our head. And that's what you touch upon in this book, and you yes. go further into it. Your first book was such a success. In this book, which just came out, you're talking about that voice in the head. Explain that. A lot yes. of people don't know they have that voice in their head. Yes. Many people, if you ask them, they say, well, every once in a while. And then you ask them, how often? And uh, most of us, the voice in our head is 24-7. And the most important thing to know about the voice in your head is most people believe the voice in the head is me. I'm mm -hmm. it, it's me, mm -hmm. it's concurrent. Right. The reality is, is it's not. Uh, or is your conscience? There's many ways to put it. Lots of people believe it's your higher self. Lots of people believe it's the God self. Uh, whatever it is, the point is, is that uh, it's kind of like if you're the president of the United States, problem comes up, you ask your board of directors, which in our country is your secretary of state, your secretary of war, and on and on. So if someone attacks us, the, the secretary of state is going to say, let's negotiate, and the secretary mm -hmm. of war is going to say, let's bomb them. So right. if you're the president, you have to decide which is which. So the voice in your head generally just tells you what to do. And we believe it's us saying it, so we do it. If we pause, if we're mindful, if we're unattached, to the outcome, then we can make a good decision. But usually the voice in our head often, I'd say about 30% of the time, it misinterprets. An example of oh that. Oh boy, is that true? I yeah. can definitely attest to that. Now, what inspired you to write this book? Oh, I've had more therapy than anyone I've ever met. So in my story, uh, I'm, my dad died when I was a kid, and, and I thought I was the boss of the family because I didn't trust the other ones. And you go through a lot of emotional stuff the rest of your life. And so for me, um, probably when I was in my late 20s, I became incredibly successful in the real estate business. Mm -hmm. And then I had a nice wife, nice kids. Everything was perfect, but I wasn't happy. So uh, you start saying, okay, all of that stuff isn't it. And once you get those things out of the way, then it becomes pretty easy to see something's missing. So in order to find out what was missing, uh, I did this. Early in my real estate career, probably in my early 30s, I wrote Did you figure out what was missing? Uh, yeah, but what was missing is I thought I was the voice in my head. <laughs> what was missing was my higher self guiding my life and just listening to all of those uh, global positioning system places, taking right, me to one happy place. Right, should be. What is the one thing that you want people to take away after reading this book? Uh, that they should know that they have choice in everything and that they should kind of give themselves like a half an hour before they decide to do anything. So you get an email, you get a text, it offends you. Do not text back, do not email back, wait. That is referred to as being mindful. Today there's so much talk about that. Meditation is a way of being mindful. Um, um, even sleeping is a way of, if we sleep on something, we're gonna be mindful. The thing is, is that the voice in our head is like a tennis game, we react. Something hits the ball in our court, we hit it back immediately. And when we hit it back, maybe two-thirds of the time, we right. may be doing it self-destructively. Right. All right, so to be mindful. All right, Stephen J. Fogel, thanks for being with us this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you. You have a great one. Good, thank you.